All right, it looks like we are up and running, and I'm going to get started. I think there's a commercial that you may be seeing at the start of the video. Oh, looks like we're on. All right, well, welcome. My name is Zari, and today I'm doing a healing seminar, and it kind of serves several purposes. One is that to let people know that healing, of course, is available to us. It's a promise of God given to us through Christ Jesus because of his sacrifice on the cross for us. And it's also um, an opportunity to teach those who want to learn how to minister healing to others. It's very easy to do. Um, one of the things you need to do is just be in faith and be able to share Jesus with them. Um, we have tons of promises for healing that are available to us in the Bible. And we need to know what those promises are. And we need to live those promises out, speak those promises, and believe them with great faith. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, I am a believer in Jesus Christ, the Messiah, you know, that he was born on the earth as a man, came and walked the earth. His history is recorded in the Bible. I believe every word in the Holy Bible. I believe in God, the Most High, Jehovah, Yahweh. There is no other besides him. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who is our agent of power on the earth. It's his resurrection power and dunamis power that allows us to be able to receive the healing from the heavenly realm into the earth realm. And um, I believe in angels and miracles and all those things that the Lord allows us to be able to partake in so that we can have abundant life. Um, so just so you know that this is no magic, it's no voodoo, it's no foolishness, any of that stuff. These things are real. And yes, a lot of times some of the things that happen when someone's being healed are out of our boxes. But that's the way the Lord works. He says in Isaiah that his ways are higher than ours and his thoughts are higher than ours up to the heavens. And if, you know, we could contain him with our thoughts and with our understanding, he wouldn't be God. We would. But we are not him, but we partner with him through angelic hosts, through the word of God, through Jesus Christ, through Holy Spirit. And we're able to bring um, the desires of his heart. You know, like it says in the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven from the heavenly realm, from the spiritual realm, into the earth realm, and that's what we're going to do. So, before I do that, I'm just going to pray, and then we'll go into worship, and then um, we'll, um, you know, pray for people who need to be healing. And I know I already have somebody, every time I do one of these seminars, I have somebody in my head that I'm praying for, for specifically so that they can be healed, and I use them as an example of when I'm showing you some of the different ways that um, healing can be ministered to others. So let's just go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, I give you thanks. I give you thanks that you've told us so many things about how we can partner with you, how we can come into your presence, how we can receive from you, how we, we can be in deep, intimate relationship with you. And I praise you for that. I praise you that you are Jehovah Shammah. You are the Lord who is near. And I praise you that you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our physician, the Lord who heals us. So, Lord, I'm coming to you today because you said in James that if I draw near to you, you will draw near to me, and I'm seeking you for healing. I'm also seeking you to be Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner, so that if the enemy were to come in as a flood and try to cause hindrances between the teaching that needs to go forth, the healing that needs to go forth, the word of God that needs to go forth, that you would raise up a standard against them that they cannot stand, that they can't bring any interference into this. I seal off this area right now with the blood of Jesus with the name of Jesus, with the authority of Jesus, with the power of Holy Spirit, and by angelic hosts. And I say that everything that needs to be delivered will be delivered according to the plan of the Lord. I say that there will be no blockers, no hindrances, no evil words, no doubt, or anything that are able to that's able to come into this atmosphere right now in Jesus' name, and it's sealed with the blood of Jesus and with Holy Spirit. All right, so... Um, like I said before, there are tons of promises for healing available to us in the Bible, so many of them. You know, um, there's the scriptures in Isaiah that say, by Christ's stripes we are healed. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And it's true, there's, um, there, Jesus took stripes, you know, he was beaten and bruised and cut. And every time he was cut, one of those cuts took a specific disease or a specific illness. So whatever thing that, that comes on your body, whether it be a cold, whether it be cancer, whether it be AIDS, whether it be Ebola, whatever it is that comes on your body, you one of the things that you can do to receive your healing is, you know, you have to know the word. You have to know that Jesus is going to heal you. You have to humble yourself enough to want to call out to him and ask for him to heal you. And then you just get a picture in your mind of his body being um you know, being broken and being, being wounded for you and see that sickness in one of his stripes. And then you, you, you know, you, that sickness has already been placed on his body 
therefore you have the right to give it back to him. You know, he's already taken it from you, and he still has those scars. There are, are instances and visions where he's shown up and he's shown people the scars on his body from the illnesses that he's taken, from the diseases, from the sicknesses and things he's taken for others. So just get that picture of him in your mind and see the name of that sickness or whatever it is that's ailing you on his body and you give it back to him. There's a scripture in Peter tell, that tells us to cast your cares upon the Lord. And if you look at the original language, it's actually saying to hurl your cares on him. So it's like your sickness is a rock, your care is a rock, your you know, whatever's troubling you in your life is like a rock, and you just throw it at Jesus, and it's going to stick to him as if he were tape, and it's, you know, a piece of paper. It's going to stick to him that way. That's the way he intended it. He doesn't intend for those that he loves to carry any type of burden. That's not his way. You know, he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Like, everything that's in the Bible, and Hebrews 1 tells us this, he's given us everything we need for life and godliness, and it's true. You know, when you're in covenant relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ, you don't have to live a life of sickness. You don't have to live a life of lack. You don't have to live a life of pain, you know, stress, any of that stuff. You can give that to the Lord and exchange it for the abundance that he wants to give you. You know, and that's something that you need to do. You need to walk in that, especially these next couple of years that we go in, are going into 2014 right now, up until about two years from now, 2016, things are going to get rough. And it's actually the year of the whirlwind, um, 5775 in the biblical year. And you need to be able to have strong faith so that you can stand and so that you can minister healing and rest and peace and the love of God to other people. They are expecting you as a believer to be different. God's expecting you as a believer to be different and to say, look, I have an answer to your problem. You know, that's what he equips us to do. I've explained this before. If you follow me at all on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Zari Banks, Z-A-R-I-B-A-N-K-S, like the financial institution, um, that the way you tap into God's power, that dunamis power, that resurrection power that Christ gives us access to is first you have to have the love of God. And then when you have the love of God, then he pours out his grace on you. And then through grace, your faith explodes. And then through faith, you have that dunamis power that becomes active in your life. If you follow that flow chart, you will be powerful. God bless you. You will be powerful, and you'll be able to minister healing to, uh, you know, healing, deliverance, whatever else anybody else needs to yourself, to your own household, and to all those around you. You know, that's God's intention. You are set apart. You're a holy and peculiar people specifically because you have the ability to walk in the power, walk in the anointing of the Lord to do things that other people can't do, right? So tons of scriptures that promise healing. So many things like Jesus, it, it talks about him all the time in the Gospels. He went about healing all who were sick and who were oppressed of the devil. Jesus never turned anybody away from healing. But you also have to notice that there are some cities that he went to visit. And it said he couldn't perform very many miracles and things there because of their lack of faith. Especially when you're coming for healing because the enemy wants to whisper in your ear and say, that hurts, your healing's not coming to you. You know, these are the types of sicknesses that kill people, healing's not coming to you. You have to have great faith, no doubt, no wavering when you go to the Lord, you know, to speak the word and to request healing. It's very, very important. Healing is one of those things that you have to be tenacious about it. You have to fight for it as if, you know... You know, and sometimes it does, but your life depends on it. It doesn't matter even how, you know, small the sickness it is. The thing about fear is that anytime any sickness comes on your body, you know, that fear is standing right behind you waiting to, to tell you all kinds of lies and tell you that this is getting worse. And I know this is true in my life, you know, because I have um, an anointing for healing and divine health that I received through my mentor, Prince Hanley. We had a, a fantastic healing ministry. But, like, when I get sick, anything, like a rash, a bump, a something, anything that comes on me, then immediately I hear this little voice telling me all kinds of things, this is a tumor, this is this, this is that, this is that, this is that. And the reason that I know those are all lies is because I already know, the Lord has already told me that you've broken through, you know, in faith for healing, and you have divine healing and health, and that is your right. So I expect to be healed from anything that plagues me. I expect to be delivered from anything, you know, that the enemy tries to put on me, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you have to be absolutely sure. 
you know, when you go to the Lord for healing because the enemy will. The first thing they're going to do is tell you you cannot be healed. There's no cure for this. They're going to whisper all that kind of stuff. They're going to tell you this is going to cost you this, and you're going to have to miss work, and you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do this. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. And you have to say, no, I know what the Word of God says. I'm choosing to believe the Word. You know, just like he asked Isaiah, whose report are you going to believe? You have to believe his report because his report has stood the test of time. The Bible says that the heavens and earth will pass away, but the word of the Lord stands forever. You know, we don't have that guarantee in anything else. Nothing else stands forever, but his word does stand forever. Another thing in Hebrews that the word tells us is that God upholds all things. And if you look at the original language, he's saying the composition of the universe is held together by the word of my power. And it doesn't say the power of my word. It says the word of my power. So God exalts his own word the words that he speaks to you personally, to us personally, through prophets, through whatever, you know, and the written word, the logos word that's in the Bible, he upholds all things by the word of his power. So his word is exalted above his name, you know, so that's how powerful the word of God is. So when you are facing anything in life, but specifically healing, go grab some of those healing scriptures. You set your timer for seven minutes. I always use seven because it's complete. It's a perfect number. It's great. Like when I'm praying for something focused, just set your timer for seven minutes and you just read those healing scriptures over and over and over again. You know, and then you feel some pain again. You go set your timer again for seven minutes and read the scriptures over and over and over again. You know, you get up in the morning, you don't feel too good. Read those scriptures over and over and over again. I have journals where I just record scripture, scripture, scriptures. I'll be reading a, the Bible and I'm like, ooh, I want that promise. So I just put it down in my journal and angel just walked past there. Did you see it? Um, um. So I'll, I'll just write those scriptures down, record in my journal, and then sometimes I will, you know, be needing to pray or something. I don't have the right attitude or whatever, so I just pull out the journal with all the scriptures in it and just start speaking that stuff all over. Even if I don't have the right attitude, my atmosphere changes because that's what happens when the word of the Lord goes out, okay? So I just say right now, I see some people are coming and going, and I just say right now that if they are having any trouble with their internet, with their Wi-Fi, with their connection, anything that would stop them from receiving this word, that I bind that right now and cast it out and away from them in Jesus' name, and I loose the angelic host to go and seal the atmosphere all the way from where they are up to the heavens so that they can get um, clear access to the teaching, and it will go forth, and it will be released to them in great measure. And I declare this all in Jesus' name. All right, so... I've given you a little bit of the word, you know, just keep those things in your mind, the word of God, you know, to heal and to act and the testimonies of Jesus Christ become your prophecies. When you remember what he's done in the past, that builds your faith and it helps you expect him to do those same things for you. So let's just review some great healings that the Lord has um, done. We'll start with the Bible and then I'll start with some personal things, but um, remember in the Bible, the woman with the issue of blood, you know, she was going through the crowd, reaching out, and she said, all I need to do is touch the hem of his garment. That is another excellent testimony that you can um, take and receive your own healing or to minister healing to somebody else. Because you, if you look at the context of the time that she lived in, number one, she was an outcast because um, anytime you're bleeding, nobody could be around you, right? You had to be secluded. And she, they said she was going through that problem for what, like 12 years? So she spent t the better part of 12 years secluded and not able to be around anybody else. And she said she spent all of her money on doctors trying to get healed um, unsuccessfully. So this lady was poor, not only that, and then, you, you know, you were all, also an outcast because of that. So basically she was just down and out horrible, but she risked everything. You know, she risked being stoned. She risked um, being tossed away from Jesus. She risked embarrassment, everything, shame and just crawl through to touch the hem of his garment. Now, if you just think over that testimony and imagine in your mind, and your imagination is good as long as you have it controlled and submitted to the Holy Spirit. Your imagination is a great thing. You know, I know I'm getting off topic here, but even in Genesis, the Lord said um, God created man and woman in his image. And He, when you look at the original Hebrew, it's saying God created man and woman in his imagination. So it is a godly thing, your imagination. He gave it to you, and the reason for it is because the Lord says anything you see, you can have. And that's a specific promise that he's given me. You know, um, it was earlier in 2014. It was one of the things he gave to me in a dream. He was like, Zara, if you can see it, I will give it to you. You know, if you can call it forth, I will give it to you. So so your imagination is a good thing. So just get the picture of the woman. You just, I mean, just imagine how destitute and how, you know, just down and out she was just crawling through because she was so desperate to be healed and she knew that Jesus could heal her, no questions asked. 
And she crawled through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment. And he said, uh, power went out of me. So he was saying dunamis power. That's that resurrection power. That's that Holy Spirit power that's available to us on the earth. That power is available to us. All we have to do is tap into it, you know. That power went out of Jesus and into her body, and she was immediately healed. And not only that, but the Bible says she was whole. So you know what that means? Not only did he heal her physical bo physical body, but when that dunamis power hit her, it went in and healed her soul. And that's where souls is, is where our soul gardens, you know, the wounds in there and the, the dirt and stuff, that's where a lot of our sicknesses lie. Because everything that comes into our bodies, everything that we see, everything that we think, everything we say, word curses, all that stuff goes directly into our soul gardens. And when there are wounds there and weeds and all that stuff, sickness can grow very easily. It's like the environment. It's bacteria environment. You know how um, diseases and all that stuff grow in a dirty environment? Well, if your soul garden is filthy and nasty and disgusting, you're going to have, uh, you know, a Petri dish that's susceptible to any types of disease and all kind of stuff. You know, a lot of things like, like there are so many, it's a huge increase of things like um, ADHD and all that stuff. ADHD is one of those things that comes from, like if you live in a house with yelling and screaming or you grew up with parents with yelling and screaming, a lot of times people don't associate that, but I've seen that and that happens um, to, to kids because what it does is it um, triggers an anxiety in the brain. And this is what I know from being a teacher, but this is, and you know, from having to study the brain and how the brain works and things like that, but it's also what I know from um, being in communion with Holy Spirit and just talking to him and seeing how things come about and stuff like that. But the anxiety that kids, you know, grow up in, that those things start messing up your brain and start telling your brain stuff like that, that, you're, that you need to be anxious, that you can't sit still, that you're worried about how this is going to happen and da 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 and all this stuff. And then kids end up with ADHD and all that stuff just because, you know, they're, you know, the parents haven't taken the time to reel in what their issues are and they're just sending them over to their kids we have to remember that the bible says that um, the sins of the parents go down to the children you know to the third and fourth generation and a lot of times we try to say oh that's the old testament jesus became a curse for us and you know we we're not you know that doesn't apply to us that's not true that's not how it works there were three covenants given in the bible you know the only one that was uh, three covenants given in the New Testament. I'm sorry, in the Old Testament, only one was dispelled when Jesus came, and that's because the New Covenant replaced it. So it went from being three, and then Jesus took care of the one, you know, the one, the the one about the law, the eye for an eye type part, and then he came in with grace. But those other two covenants that have to do with the universal laws, they still exist, you know. So you can't say the Old Testament doesn't apply to us. And with all the sickness and disease and the lack and all the stuff that's going on in the world, you have to know we missed something. There's some type of disconnect. And saying the Old Testament is not relevant to us is part of our problem. And it's a huge problem. And I know because I lived that way for a long time. But we can't just ignore those things. You know, a lot of the sicknesses and things that we have, they're listed in the Old Testament. The reasons why we have them is because we've disobeyed something in one of the covenants that the Lord laid out. And then, you know, we're trying to live and figure out and try to get things worked out in you know, human means through doctors and all that stuff, and it just doesn't work that way. Um, our mouths, the word curses and things like that we speak, you know, out into the earth realm, those things cause more sicknesses than so much stuff. And it's ridiculous because Proverbs tells us over and over and over again about how the words that we speak go into other people's bodies, go down into our old, own bodies and stuff like that. It's horrible. There's another scripture, Proverbs 3, 9, and 10, where the Lord's talking about the first fruits. If you go back and study out the original language, one of the things that um, is listed in there when the Lord's saying he's going to protect you with first fruits is things like nerve damage are included in that first fruits thing. And, you know, so if you honor the Lord with first fruits, you're ended up getting not only are your vats going to be full and your storehouses full, you know, your provisional things, but your body will also be healthier. Why? Because he told us why when he laid out the covenants back in um, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. You know, but we don't. We we always like to compartmentalize things because, you know, that's what logic tells us to do. But God's consistent all the way through. Like, you know, when he's laying out stuff for us, he's looking at it from the beginning all the way out into eternity. And we can't compartmentalize things. We have to pay attention to everything that he's saying to us when he says it. And no, you can't learn everything and know everything. But that's why he drops the word of the Lord into the spirits of teachers and sends us out, you know, to deliver the word to those who need it okay so we're going to start worshiping and just expect healing expect holy spirit expect angels 
to surround your atmosphere. Just come into agreement with me. Just voice it out loud. Say, I'm coming into agreement with her that the atmosphere is going to change, that the Spirit of the Lord is going to come, that angelic hosts that have healing in their hands are going to come and receive. And then if you if you don't necessarily need healing for yourself, like say you don't have a physical issue, but maybe you have a soul wound that you need healed, get that healed, you know. And then um, you once you learn how to do it, then you go and you minister healing to others. That's what you do. Once you learn how to do something, once you get the revelation, you go and you sow that into other people. All right, so let's just worship the Lord. Let's just worship the Lord. Heavenly Father, first of all, I ask your forgiveness for any sin I've committed in word, thought, or deed since the last time I came before you in confession. I apply the blood of Jesus over that sin and nail it to the cross of Christ and decree that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. The enemy can no longer use those sins to accuse me. I take the blood of Jesus and use it to seal every door that would have allowed the enemy entrance into my life and into the lives of my offspring or my loved ones as a result. And I just say right now that I am walking forward in victory. Lord, you said if I confess my sins, I am faithful. you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. So right now, in Jesus' name, I receive your forgiveness. And I ask that you please send your dunamis power, your Holy Spirit resurrection power, your love and your light right into my soul to bring healing from any wound that's existing there, whether I sinned or whether somebody sinned or spoke against me in Jesus' name. So, Lord, I just receive your Holy Spirit. I just receive your dunamis power. I receive your love into my soul. I receive your light into my soul. And I decree that I am excellent of soul. It is written, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would be in health and prosper just as your soul prospers. And I decree that my soul is prospering and my body and my, my everything in my life is springing forth in prosperity in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I just praise you, Jesus. I magnify you, Jehovah Rapha. You are the Lord who heals. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It is written, heal me, Lord God, and I will be healed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just got a picture of a gentleman, and it looks like he has some kind of maybe like some kind of like make a bite or something on a left leg so we just send that dunamis power that holy spirit power the word of god the power of jesus the name of jesus the blood of jesus right to that bite to that mark to whatever that is that's on his left leg and we just decree healing over it right now in the name of jesus thank you lord thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you lord thank you father Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Heavenly Father, that you're willing to speak to us and show us what's going on in heaven and show us your desires to heal others. And we just say right now, Lord, we will speak, we will obey, we will honor those things that you deliver to us, those things that you show us, those revelations that you give us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are submitted to you to have your way here, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The anointing is super duper strong. I could just fall over right now and be out, and I'm going to try my hardest to just stay focused. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just praise you. We just lift you up. Lord, we just magnify you and we exalt you. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I see Jesus walking toward me right now. He's got a heart in his hands and he's holding it out. So what that means is if you are suffering from a broken heart, that's something that, and that's emotional type stuff. If you're suffering from that, then he's available and present to heal that. So I just loose and I declare healing for broken hearts right now. Lord, you said in Ezekiel that if they would submit to you, if they would turn to you, if they would come back to you, that you would heal their hearts of stone to take them out of their bodies and give them hearts of flesh. So, Lord, I just decree hearts of flesh given by you to all those who need that restoration, but also to all those who are hungering and thirsting and need to return to you because they have turned away. So, Lord, we just say right now that legs are healed, bites on legs are healed, Sneezes and allergies are healed in Jesus' name. We bind and we cast those out in Jesus' name. We know that allergies are not of you. We do not receive those. We don't come into agreement with those. We speak to bodies right now and say, you come into alignment with God's perfect will. God's perfect will is health and healing. There's no sickness, no allergy, no pain, no broken heart. 
in heaven and we are citizens of heaven. And so we just call forth the healing and the restoration, the wholeness and the divine health in Jesus' name right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As one who's walking in authority right now and under the anointing that's available to heal and to bring restoration and deliverance to those, I say right now I'm binding and casting out the spirits of cancer out of anyone's body who's listening and present right now. I'm binding and casting out any type of virus that may be existing in a body right now. I'm commanding you to go now in Jesus' name. I apply the blood of Jesus at your root. And I curse you in Jesus' name, just like he did the fig tree. And I command you to be uprooted and moved into the sea, according to the word of the Lord. You must flee now in Jesus' name. And I lose healing to be received into those bodies to replace the virus and the sickness and the cancers in Jesus' name. Praise God. I magnify you and I exalt you. If you're having trouble with your right knee, the Lord is healing that. So I just release right now in the name of Jesus, according to the will of the Lord, that if you're having any type of trouble in your right knee, put your hand on your right knee and decree it healed in Jesus' name and believe it, believe it, believe it. Don't take the healing, let it feel better for a little while and then turn around and then be feeling bad again or receive pain again. Jesus is healing you. Receive it. Don't let it go. Fight for it in Jesus' name. You have to be diligent with healing. You have to fight for it. You have to take it. Do not let the enemy try to steal that from you. It is your right as a child of God for you to be healed. If you are not a child of God, the least you can do is thank him and praise him for healing you right now and then give him your life. That's the best thank you that you can give him and commit to serve him and honor him and bless him the rest of your days and share him with everybody else you come in contact with. Thank you, Jesus Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you glory. And I just magnify you, Lord God. I just magnify you. I just release that anointing and the presence of God and the presence of the angelic hosts to heal that are available right now in Jesus' name. Just grab it by faith. Just receive it. Just tell the Lord you receive it. Use your mouth. Remember, salvation is made un, um, unto confession. You know, believe it in your heart and confess with your mouth. You need to confess those things with your mouth. Let everybody in the atmosphere around you know that you're trusting in Jesus and that you're going to receive, that you're going to pull that that healing, that anointing through to where you are, that you're going to be diligent about it and fight for it and not let the enemy take that from you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. I give you honor. I magnify you, Jehovah Rapha. You are the Lord who heals, and I magnify you. I praise you, Lord God. I glorify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, this heart is still over here, so it, there must be something more to that than just emotional healing. So I just say right now, by faith in Jesus Christ, because he's the Lord of all flesh and nothing is too hard for them, that if you have a heart issue, like a heart murmur, uh, have had a heart attack or anything like that, I just release a new heart to you in Jesus' name. So receive that by faith if you need it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I just praise you. I just magnify you. Um, administering healing is really easy. One of the best things you can do is know the word of God. Um, be speaking about Jesus because when you talk about him, he shows up. He sends angels. He sends reinforcements because that's how it is. That's one of the things like um, my post that was in um, God's pen pals on Sunday is talked about how we always say OMG and oh my God and all that stuff. When you call God's name, he's expecting you to be talking to him. So don't just Say his name, oh my God, like it's not a big deal. He's holier than that and you need to reverence him. So when you're saying, oh my God, expect him to be turning to you to see what it is you need as his child. You know, so that's another way to minister healing. You just talk about Jesus and he shows up to heal because that's what he does. You know, he's Jehovah Rapha. He's a physician. You know, he's the Lord who heals. That's what he does. He will show up when you talk about him as healer. So talk about the Lord as healing you know, worship him and praise him as Jehovah Rapha. He'll show up to heal. And then you need to have your spiritual ears and eyes open so that you can hear what's coming down from heaven and so that you can see. Like I saw that heart coming toward me. You know, I saw the person who had a snake bite or I don't know why I'm thinking snake. I don't know what it is. Or it could have been a tumor. It could have been anything on that left leg that was sitting there bleeding or whatever. The Lord healed that. You know, you need to have your spiritual senses and stuff like that open 
so that you can participate in bringing healing to other people, right? And then just praise him, just worship him, and just let him into your atmosphere. You know, it's really, really good. You, you'll you get to that place where you know when your atmosphere goes from just being a regular earthly atmosphere to a heavenly atmosphere because, you know, it, it's just, you'll know. You know, it, it'll, you know, when it first happens, you'll be like, whoa, what is that? And you'll just know that the atmosphere is changing, you know. Or like when the angel walked across, you know, getting in position, they were just coming to, you know, because when you're putting out the word of God, when you're coming to pray, you know, the Lord's going to send those angels to go and take the word from your mouth and go and, and deliver it and make sure things happen. So lots of different ways to administer healing. It's not like it's like a one method fits all type of thing. You really just have to be submitted to Holy Spirit and he'll lead you and direct you and guide you. But the word of God is huge, you know, in, in you learning how to receive your healing. You need to know the word because even if you don't have like a situation like this or you're not at a place where they're praying for healing or you don't have anybody else to pray for you, if you have those scriptures going out, they have to come to pass. Isaiah 55, 11 tells us that the word does not return void. You know, it goes out and it performs everything that he said it was going to perform. So if you're reading those scriptures over and over that say, by Christ stripes you're healed, you're going to get healed. You know, and then but you have to do like James says, when you come to God and ask him for something, come in faith, no doubt, no wavering, because if you waver, he said, don't expect to receive anything from the Lord. You know, and then we kill our own blessings and manifestations of the word all the time because we go in like half thinking that God's going to do it. And, you know, and half worried that he's not going to go in in faith, especially with healing. The enemy wants you sick. They want you broke. They want you just whacked out and not effective for the house of God or for the kingdom of God. You need to go in in faith saying, no, you know, I'm going to receive this healing. I'm going to receive this blessing. I'm going to receive this provision. I'm going to be effective for God. You know, I'm going to be a voice to the nations, et cetera, et cetera. You go in in faith. Faith is that big thing, and it makes a huge difference, okay? Well, I hope you learned something. I'm going to let you all go now. Um, so things I guess I'll try to reca recap one more time. Um, oh, one thing I didn't say specifically, but I did model it when I was um, beginning to pray before I started worshiping is confession. You know, a lot of times we're sick because of sins that we've committed that we haven't actually dealt with with the Lord. And so not to be like Job's friends and say, oh, well, you sin. That's why all this is going on in your life. But at the same time, you want to be conscious and aware there are sins that you commit by not knowing and sins that you commit by knowing. And sometimes it's those things that we didn't know cause sickness that we do, you know, and then things that we should be doing for the Lord that we don't do that cause sickness. And you just want to cover all your bases. And then, you know, you ask him, Lord, is this? You know, some, if there, is there something that's blocking my healing? Is there something that I did that brought this sickness specifically on me? He'll point it out to you, believe me, because he wants you healed more than you want to be healed. You know, half the time as believers, we don't even believe that the Lord still heals. And he's like waiting, you know, just like a parent that, you know, when their kids are sick or something, he's waiting for them, you know, to ask for the medicine so that they can get better. That's how he is, Okay. All right, so visit me at zeroitswords.org. There's lots of great resources over there, books, videos, all kind of stuff. Um, I have lots of great spiritual growth courses that are coming up over the next couple of months. They will really bless you. The one that's coming up in November is called Ears to Hear. That's an awesome one if you need your spiritual senses opened and enlightened and developed because you have to practice them. You know, it's always like the Lord will open them up, but if you don't use them and get in the habit of practicing them, then, um, you know, they won't, they won't develop. Um, also, I have some books that are available for pre-order right now. If you go to zeroxwords.org and click on Supernatural, you can pre-order some books or go to Amazon Kindle and look up Zari Banks and there are tons of books over there and a couple that you can pre-order and stuff like that. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Zari Banks or on Twitter at Ms. Banks, M-I-Z-B-A-N-K-S. So thank you so much for being here. If you registered, I will send you a video of this. If not, Sorry, but I'll do it again next quarter. All right, take care. God bless you.